Navalny knew what would happen when he returned to Russia, and he had a message for his supporters in the world when it did. My message for the uh, situation when I am killed is very simple, not give up. Do me a favor, answer this one in Russian. И здесь у меня просто очевидная вещь. Ну, не сдавайтесь. Не надо, нельзя сдаваться. Если это произошло, это означает, что мы необыкновенно сильны в этот момент, раз они решили меня убить. Mikhail Ziger is the founding editor of the exiled independent Russian media outlet TV Rain. He's author of War and Punishment, Putin, Zelensky, and the Path to Russia's Invasion of Ukraine. He was in contact with Navalny during his imprisonment, received this letter from him in just this past week, and Mikhail Ziger joins me now. It's wonderful to have you, and I'm so sorry about me. what happened. Yeah, and, uh, and I could explain what, what means he went for a walk. In, in this letter here, uh, he, he wrote to me that uh, he could not see anything from his prison cell and there was the next uh, cell cell for walks so when he was walking he was not outside of the prison he was inside and he, he couldn't see anything outside so yeah it was a uh, much much worse uh, condition than than we can imagine um what I imagine you and, and, and people like you in your circle, people that have been opposed to Putin, uh, Russian exiles and, and, and even people within Russia, have been anticipating this moment. No. No. <laughs> no, you know, it's, huh. it's weird. But uh, yes, we, we used to think that, that he's, he's not an ordinary human being. Navalny. I remember that um, back in in 2015, I, I published the book, All the Kremlin's Men, mm -hmm. and one of the chapters was about Navalny. And I, I started that chapter uh, uh, saying that uh, he's not an ordinary human being, he's an alien. He's supernatural. Mm -hmm. uh, he, we, he has always been so, so sure that, that uh, his destiny was to fight against the regime. And everyone seemed to consider him to be uh, the person doomed to be the next president of Russia. He had to be Russia's first real George Washington. He mm. had to be Russia's first democratic, uh, democratically elected leader and the leader who wanted Russia to be a democracy. And we have always considered to be the next, the next ideal president of Russia. Like so, there was fate. He was fated. Yes, yes, yes. He he survived. Uh, he survived the assassination attempt back in 2020. He was um, that time. It was it was a joke, but it was not funny. But it was a joke. He was. Uh, he has always been compared to Harry Potter, who was not killed by the boy who lived by by, by Voldemort. Yeah, and so so it was impossible to uh, even even this morning. Ah. No one could believe that that that's that's something beyond our comprehension. What does what does his death mean uh, for, for Russia in this very, very fraught moment at a time when uh, repression has, in the wake of the war, that's when you left, when, when basically, in the wake of the war, new levels of repression, criminalization of even mentioning the war happened, you, you, you were forced to, to leave Russia at that time. At this moment, when repression has increased so much, what does this mean? No. A lot of people were and are crying today because because of his death and because they think that they have lost hope because he he was the only for for a lot of people inside of russia and outside of russia uh he was the symbol of the possibility of of that um decent democratic future and you know i'm during the whole day i was trying to to talk to people and try to to give them uh some some kind of hope and my my idea is that uh at least we have we have the moral example. At least we, now we have probably the first real democratic superhero in Russian history because R Russian history is very mm. traumatic. Uh, it's, it's very imperialist. It's, uh, uh, we have a huge history of violence um, and not, uh, not, not a history of prominent human rights defenders. Mm. Uh, so I think that the person who, ha who could who could have become our George Washington, sadly, uh, has become our uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, but he is going to be our moral example, and he, he is going to be the person who, 
who has led us, uh, who, who has shown the way, and who he was probably the only idealist. In, he was the only politician for many years. I, I, I must say that, that uh, the political process in Russia has been eliminated uh, back um, 20 years ago. And he was the only person who, who could not uh, agree with the fact that he, cannot, he could not be a politician. He was running um, political campaigns. He was uh, fighting uh, against President Putin. He was trying to run for, uh, for the president uh, back in, in 2018. Uh, and it's important that he has always been an idealistic person. He, he has always believed in uh, human rights, in, uh, in free speech, in the possibility of uh, fair justice. And, you know, it's, it's very remarkable for Russia because Russia is a very cynical country. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, and that's the message that, Russian, that Putin's propaganda is trying to spread, that, that, that democracy is impossible. There are no democratic countries in the world. Free speech cannot exist. There is no uh, fair justice anywhere in the world. Everything, everyone is corrupted. That's, it's corrupt, that's it's that, rigged, it's yes, fixed. That's their, and he was the person who, who, who spent years trying to defend that, that righteous cause. And I think that uh, it's very important because he is going to be the hero for the generations to come, for the generations of Russians. Uh, Mikhail Ziger, um, I, I can't tell you what, uh, what an honor it is for to have you here, and thank you for coming on a very, very difficult day. Thank it you means a lot. Thank you, sir.